Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the PM services of the Northfield Church uh, for Sunday, April the 21st. Uh, our usual procedure is to sing several songs, uh, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short message that I hope will uh, be uh, gratifying and uplifting and edifying to all of us. Here in Northfield, we sing in the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I uh, don't know if you have that book, if you want to sing along with us. So I'll make sure I uh, recite not only the number of the song, but the name of the song. So perhaps uh, if you have a different book or you can Google the song so that you can sing along with us. Uh, we will start our service this evening with number 156, a short song. It's entitled, Beautiful. 156, Beautiful. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful, Jesus is beautiful. And Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Carefully touching me, causing my eyes to see that Jesus makes beautiful. Things of my life. Uh, let's turn back to number 146 and sing one that's uh, a little more lively. Uh, I think I have the wrong one. 148. 148. I keep falling in love with him. 148. I keep falling in love with him. <clears throat> <clears throat> I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 705. The title of this song is A Common Love. A Common Love, 705, A Common Love. <clears throat> a common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common truth 
in the truth of God's word. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. We've come to the part of the service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We do this because we were instructed to do it in our New Testaments. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, when he was with his disciples, he explained all that to him, to them, uh, and therefore he explained all about all of it to us. Uh, there was symbology in their partaking of the Lord's Supper. Uh, there was the taking of the unleavened bread, which was to symbolize the body of our Lord, and then there was the partaking of grape juice, the fruit of the vine which symbolized the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. Jesus told his disciples, and the Apostle Paul reiterated it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that you should do this every first day of the week. In doing it, you remember the body and the blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we gather about the table, let's let's etch those things into our uh, into our memory banks that this is so important for us to remember the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I pray that as we gather about this table that you will hearken back to Calvary, make it uh, something so important that uh, it's almost uh, uh, it's almost a part of our our very fabric of being. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your infinite wisdom, you sent Jesus to live on this earth as a human being, that he, uh, as a human, uh, suffered, that he experienced everything that we do as human beings. And in the end, that he was sacrificed once and for all for the forgiveness of our sins. As we partake of the bread, help us to remember the body that was nailed to the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The blood that flows through our body is uh, what carries everything to our body and allows life uh, to take place. As the blood flowed from Jesus's body, uh, the life, the physical life withdrew from him and that blood became so important to us. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're just so grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood and as we look at it, we understand that it is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood from which grace has abounded to us. It is the blood that allows forgiveness of sins. And as we partake, help us to bring our sins to you, knowing that through the blood that they may be forgiven. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. Not only are we to observe the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week, but we've also been instructed to lay by in store and give back to the Lord on the first day of the week. They did that in the first century. Uh, uh, the first century church did that, and they were instructed to give as they have had prospered. Uh, for me, and from the way I view the scriptures, it's supposed to be a sacrifice. It's supposed to be above and beyond. It's supposed to uh, 
come to understand uh, what we are supposed to do here on earth and what the church's mission is. Uh, yesterday here at Northfield, we went into Atlantic City and uh, we fed uh, some homeless people that lived there in Atlantic City. Well, we had some clothing, some food, and uh, we were able to, to help them in some way. That only happens when church people uh, give, uh, not just of their means, but give of their time and of their energy. Let's pray over the giving. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to give. We're grateful that we have the desire to give. Help those that uh, use these monies to use it in such a way that uh, the gospel message uh, will come to be known by more and more people, that those that are in need may be helped through the generous giving of our members. Be with us as, our give, as we give and bless us. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we'll sing is number 399. 399. It's entitled, Jesus Calls Us. When you uh, listen to the lesson this evening, you'll understand why I chose this as the song before the lesson. Jesus calls us. <clears throat> Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives, while reckless sea, day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, Follow me, Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star. From each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, Days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures. Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior, make us hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience. Serve and love thee, best of all. That concludes our song service. And now uh, I know that we have praised the Lord the way he has instructed us to do so. Uh, now we are uh, going to get into the lesson. Uh, if you were there, this morning, uh, you heard that uh, the lesson for the evening will be the call of God. The call of God. Hence the song, Jesus Calls Us. Uh, in 1903, uh, the uh, author Jack London uh, wrote a book uh, considered one of the classics. It is entitled, the Call of the Wild. Interesting book. If you're a dog lover, you may really like it. Um, the, the plot of the book is that uh, this dog, whose name is Buck, uh, lives a rather comfortable life uh, in California, and he is sold, and he winds up being a sled dog in the Yukon. I understand that Jack London spent a year in the Yukon to see what it was like in preparation for the writing of this book. Uh, Buck goes from a life of leisure uh, to a life of, pardon the pun, dog eat dog, as he becomes a member of a dog sled and has to literally fight in this new existence. I suppose uh, perhaps the theme of the book is that uh, life isn't always easy, and sometimes we have to adjust to its rigors. 
And so uh, the lesson this evening is about a calling. And I have entitled it The Call of God. Have you ever expected a call? <laughs> have you ever, ever expected a call and gotten the call and it was good news? I remember way, way back uh, when I was looking for a teaching job uh, just after I graduated from college and I had put papers around uh, to many, many schools. I wanted to stay in Arkansas because uh, Jane, my future wife, was still there in school and I wanted to be close to her. And so uh, I did get a job. I got a call from a, a small school in Cross County, Arkansas. And uh, I was so glad to get that call. Uh, it meant so much to me. Uh, this week, if you're a sports fan, one of the unique uh, events takes place in uh, the National Football League called the Draft, when all the teams in the National Football uh, League draft college players to play on their teams. Can you imagine a, a, an athlete getting a call from a team saying, we're going to draft you. Uh, we want you to be part of our team. Well, you know what? Uh, all of these pale in comparison, I believe, to the call of God. In the short little book of Jude, as Jude uh, gives his words to us in his introduction he says, to those who were called to God the Father. That's who he addresses it to. Those that were called. And so what does that exactly mean? To me, it means that those that have been called have obeyed God into obedience. Hence, they are the called of God. And so... First of all, let's look at the fact that this calling is a heavenly calling. You know, the, the call that I received for a job or the call that an athlete received is, is an earthly call. The call of God is a spiritual call. And the Hebrew writer reminds us that in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, where he says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling. You see, the physical calls uh, in this life are, are earthly calls. There's, a, there's another realm. There's a superior realm, superior to anything else that we have on earth. It is the call if we are to live with the Lord uh, forever and eternally that we must answer and that we must respond to. And because of receiving and accepting that spiritual call, we will one day be in a realm that all of those spiritual things that we want to be in our lives will exist. Secondly, it's a very high calling. Paul was excited about that. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, he wrote, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The apostle Paul knew it was God that was calling him, calling him to something new. And he was calling him through Christ Jesus. It's a high calling because it deals with the spiritual and not with the physical. It, it's a high calling because it deals with the eternal things of life, not the temporary things of life. It's a high calling because it deals with God and not man. And it's a high calling, as Paul indicated in the scripture, because it leads to a great prize that we strive for. Just as athletes strive for a prize in winning games, we want to win at the game of life. 
And this calling is a high calling that brings us to our Lord. With that, it is also a holy calling. We live in a, in a rather vile world, don't we? Uh, in this 24 hour news cycle, we, we can see constantly all the things that are happening and all the negative things that are happening, happening. And, and unfortunately we live in this world, but we're, we're, we're called, I believe, to rise above this. When Paul wrote to Timothy in Second Timothy, uh, chapter one and verse nine, he wrote, why, uh, I'm sorry, who, and that means God, has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which he granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. That's the call. It's a holy call. It's a spiritual call. And what God expects of us, his expectations for us, is to take this holy calling that he talks to Timothy about and for us to live holy lives. As Jesus said, we're to be lights of the world. We can't hide those lights. Being the light of the world means that we have answered the calling of the Lord. The calling is not from corrupt men, but from a holy God. And the, the root idea, I believe, of holy is that we are set apart. We are holy to God. We have been made holy to do holy works through Jesus Christ. Also, it's a special calling. It's a special calling because of where we came from and where we are called to be. We weren't called to God because we were already holy people. Jesus came into a sinful world. He died to save people from their sins. Therefore, this calling is such a, a special one because we were in our sins until we took Jesus into our lives. The Apostle Paul again describes that in the second chapter of Ephesians, verses 1 through 3. He says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of the flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. God called us out of that. You know, he could have easily given up on us. Instead of giving up on us, God sent Jesus to us. Instead of giving up and saying, these people are filled with wrath, they're sin-filled, he gave us Jesus to pull us out of that. You know, in the world of collecting if you've ever watched Antiques Roadshow, if you know anything about a collecting memorabilia of any kind, we know part of the mystique of memorabilia and its value lies in that many times the reason some of these things are so valuable is because there are so few of them. Some of the most famous expensive baseball cards uh, are valuable because there are so few of them that are in uh, the condition that make them valuable. 
uh, last week, a comic book published in 1938. It was the first comic book in which Superman uh, was introduced. Uh, this comic, as far as what I knew, there were only some 200 of them left, and this one was very special. Brethren, it sold for six million dollars. One comic book. Why? Because it was so special. And God calls us because he says we're special. We, we have been called and it's special because so few accept the calling. Now it's unfortunate that this is true, uh, but it is. Uh, the Marines used to have uh, a saying, I don't know if they still use it anymore, but that saying, their mantra was, Marines, the few and the proud. You know, it's not God's will that few accept because the scripture tells us in Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Why did Peter write this? Because he used to be with Jesus. And in Matthew 22, 14, Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. It's, it's sad that many of the people who are called to live with God are not willing to submit to the caller. They want to do things their own way, and the, they don't want anyone to tell them how they should live. That's what makes the calling so special. It's special because the call had been called to eternal life. Many live for the pleasures of the day. We're always reminded of the, the farmer who, uh, one particular year had this wonderful crop. Uh, he had so much that he tore his barns down and he built new barns. And he said, you know what? I've got so much that I can lay back and I don't have to do anything anymore. His problem was that he was living in the now. He was living in the temporary world. And to that, Jesus told him that his, his life would be required of him that very night. And so it's, it's sad to understand that many don't answer that call. Uh, to many, the grave is the end. But to those who accept the call, ah, the best is yet to come. That's why uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called. And lastly, on my list is that the call is special because when we answer the call, God is glorified. Maybe you've heard something, some, somebody say this when, when someone is baptized and when they, they come out and they greet everyone after they're baptized, uh, very often someone will say, the angels are in heaven are singing now. We, we know that God wants everyone to be saved. He gave his son so that could happen. And so when one accepts the call, God's efforts have been successful and he's glorified. Peter explains that in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. He says his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Isn't that amazing? Paul wrote uh, in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.14, he called you through our gospel that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That when we gain the glory God is glorified. And so 
God calls us through Jesus Christ. Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected from the dead so that we can answer the call to live with him eternally. He calls us through the gospel message to obey that wonderful plan of salvation that by uh, immersing ourselves in the waters of baptism, as Acts 2.38 tells us, that we can uh, arise in a newness of life. And to get back to the message, why does this happen? Because we have decided to answer the call, to answer the call of our God. Now, Jesus said it, many are called, but few have chosen. And so the invitation goes out to us this evening. You are being called. Have you responded to the call that the way that the, way that the Bible describes it? Have you understood that it's a, a heavenly calling? It's a high calling? That it's a, a holy calling? that it's a, a special calling. It's special because it takes us to God and it's special when one answers it because our God is glorified. We glorify God when we answer the call and we become one of his children. Hence, I extend the invitation to you this evening. The call is there. If you uh, need to come to the Lord tonight. He's called you. The scriptures explain to us how we answer that call. After hearing and believing the word of God, we confess Jesus Christ as his son. We repent of our former ways because we don't want to be a part of this wicked world. We are baptized for the remission of our sins, washing those sins away because Jesus died for us. And we rise up out of the water. We have the possibility of resurrection with our God through Jesus Christ, because we've answered the calling and we've responded to it. If you need to come to the Lord this evening, please get in touch with us. And we are there for you to help you in any way possible. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the time that we've had together this evening. Help us to make this short message uh, uh, important to us as we understand that the call of God is so very, very, very important. Be with us this evening. Help us as we put our heads on our pillows to know that we have been called by God and we've been called to respond to him, that spiritual and holy calling. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be the Christians that we ought to be. Help us to be the lights of the world. Help us to show our faith through the good deeds that we do for you. Continue to bless us. Continue to help us to be your humble servants in all things. Forgive us of our sins. Be with us and bless us always. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.